Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Will Motivation. And in today's video, we are talking about the times when sometimes you gotta take an L in real estate and in investing. So I'm gonna drop some knowledge on um, real estate investing because some of you guys have been asking me. So those of you guys that don't know, I am a real estate investor, but I'm also a car enthusiast. So in the second half of this video, we are gonna have some fun with the Ferrari F12. We took it out for a drive with the new exhaust. So, you know, stay tuned for that second part if you came for the car content. But I've been getting a lot of requests for some real estate investing content, some knowledge. So let's get right to it. You're watching Will Motivation, the channel on YouTube where you not only get to check out some sweet supercars, nice cribs, and exotic destinations, but also get educated on different avenues that lead to success, no matter where you come from. Here is where we create, educate, and motivate. Welcome to Will Motivation. Holla. What's up YouTube? Quick video today about investing in real estate. And sometimes you make money, sometimes you take a loss. And in my case, sometimes taking a loss, I'm gonna tell you, for me, like, sometimes I take a loss and I know I'm gonna take a loss. So, for me, when is the right time to take an L in uh, your real estate investment? So. In this case, I'm headed over to uh, one of my investment properties. I'm going to show it to you guys. And uh, long story short, I want you guys to know my justification for taking a loss on this property. It's a property I bought uh, maybe, I um, uh, probably bought it around 2014, some, somewhere around that time. And... Uh, I bought it for like a hundred and right around a hundred and ten thousand, I think, more or less, something like that. Now the house is worth probably two hundred and sixty thousand, two hundred seventy thousand, something like that. So I'm not underwater in the house by any means. I'm it's a profitable house, you know. Paid it off a while ago, you know, flipping real estate but it's a rental property right now. And so how do you how can you potentially take a loss on a rental, rental property? Well, the rental, the value of the rental property per month is somewhere around 1,800 bucks a month. And I am renting it out for 1,000 bucks a month uh, or about 900 bucks a month, but the tenant is demanding to pay me a thousand bucks so I'm losing out on about eight or nine hundred dollars a month but there's a reason for that so let's go over there see if we can figure it out okay so we just got to uh, the rental property so let's go check out the situation and see why we take an L in some cases I don't know you guys might recognize this car some of you guys OG subscribers this is this property I bought it a while ago added a bedroom to it we gotta get this grass cut though so i got an american flag up here okay hey. got him let's see what kind of mess he made in here <laughs> what's good man you good yeah. this is the first time i see you since you came back yeah. yeah all right what kind of trouble we got in here today mattress where is it i don't know the side of the wall all right let's go see because you see the the path there it wouldn't fit. I tried multiple times. So. I got the box, box spring up. Where'd this mattress come from? Mattress from. Here in Columbus? How'd you get it over here? Big delivery. Uh, I should have made them cats pick it up there. Alright, so in lieu of 30 bucks, we're gonna try to somehow get this mattress over the thing. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Alright, so that only took us how many minutes? All right, so we did it. it. Took us about five minutes. He's sitting here trying to do it all day by himself. Oh, we gotta make sure we don't get no copyright strikes. That's tight. All right, we gotta get him a bigger desk. You gonna, you gonna start working from the office? I was at the office. I'm gonna start going back to the office too. Uh, June 2nd, things open back up in Ohio, so no, no restrictions of COVID. All right, so this used to be a three bedroom. 
but now we turn it into a four bedroom. Steve. Yeah, so this actually could be an office. Yeah, I thought about that. We could put a, we could put, we could, uh, that'd be dope though. It's supposed to be a dining room or an office. Desk here that has your computer and maybe like a little side desk that has your printer and mm -hmm. whatever. Then yeah, the whole place. <laughs> That'd be dope. If, it, if this is my career, I'll make this into an office. Plus, got some like you, you burn it, like, so sit down. It, like a sitting area? Yeah, you burn it. Nah, I put a, I, oh yeah, in the office. Put a little, so, a little chair right there for some of my cons. Have your desk right here. And then you can sit back here and build. That's what I would do, son. If this was like my mom, this would be like the living room with the, the plastic on the furniture. See? <laughs> nah, you don't want to be that. No, nobody's allowed in. You don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. So everybody say what's up to Reg. Y'all seen Reg uh, when he bought his new car and when he got the truck. And so now he's got a new crib. So we're going to try to help him get it together. Um, like I said, it used to be a three bedroom. But let me show y'all what we did. So around this corner, so there's like a bathroom, three bedroom, two and a half bath. This is the most popular home style in um, the middle, like suburban areas in Columbus. So it used to be when you come in this living room, this was a vaulted ceiling oh. that went was just totally wasted space, wide open. There was nothing up there. So we built a bedroom. Steve did it. I was wondering why there was a bedroom with the Yeah, it's got the little thing. So you could, you know, you could use that storage if you wanted to. We put a little closet in there. But you got your, your living room, plenty of space for a living room. That's why I make that front room office. Silence, smell like you was cooking, man. What you cooking in here, Reg? What's Reg cooking? Look at this dude. Look at this dude. Look at this dude, son! So he's Man. doing it bachelor style, but he got some honey made s'mores. Okay, cereal jump. Got his little. Uh, yeah, you need to you need to make that an office so you can have a big desk in there. You can do all your pay your bills and all that stuff. He's got a backyard with fence. In case Reds wants to get a Rottweiler. Yeah, it's got your work cut out for you. We're gonna make some updates to this crib. Um, it has some older style. Um, light switches they're like this almond beige color and most of the houses at the time when they built this right around the year 2000 they uh they all the, all the houses had that so now the more modern look is to change these switches and little fixtures and stuff change these out to be um bright white so that's one thing we're going to do we'll also put ceiling fan and depending on how much it costs maybe we'll do all the bedrooms but at least in the master bedroom so when he lays yeah, you get some, get some ceiling fans. That's where I got these. And then we'll have them wire them up. Nice. Let's look at his auction stuff. Yeah, he's the auction master. 20 bucks. Do you ever sell anything that you buy off the it's auctions? Use it. This dude, man, he's supposed to be making money with that stuff. So we're going to add ceiling fans in here for the electrician, and we'll have him change out all of the fixtures to be white. It's probably going to cost us about mm, 800 bucks, something like that. And it'll be worth it, though. We'll update the house. Anything else you need me to fix in here? But there's so many of them. She's talking about like having a dude over here all day changing those things up. So, anything else you need me to fix? We got it on tape. Because if you don't find that, you're not fixing it. There's a couple of doors that's kind of like real hard to The price is insane or something. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll get a carpenter over here. So, Nydia, we got to do that. Make sure. Oh, okay, I thought that was some. We clean up the cobwebs and stuff. Get somebody come over here and clean. So you need a big TV for your living room, right? Yeah. All right. I, so. I was waiting for the furniture to come in and see. Probably get that from the auction too. No, I already got it. TV? Got it. No, the furniture. I love it. You need a big TV. Oh, you already got furniture? Yeah. Where's it at? It's coming in a week and a half. Okay, so Bobby, Reg. Bobby City. So tell them what you do at HBCU Connect, which is, uh, for those that don't know, that's my like my main business that I started a long time ago. So tell them how long you've been working there, man. Oh, man, about 16 years. You overpaid your rent by $100, too, by the way. Oh. You're supposed to discount that. Yeah. So since, 20, since 2005, 2005? 
And uh, what do you do over there at HBC Connect? I do a lot of things, but I just help out where I can. He said a lot of things. He I does. Do. He's a so- yeah. He definitely does. But software. Uh, he's a software engineer by trade, just like me. We used to work together. He also does like campaign activations for people that's doing email and stuff like that. Um, and basically, my right hand man. So we gotta make sure Reg's crib is straight. Get him together. So we're, this is gonna be the before and after. Before and after. Oh. Yeah, this is the before. So once you get all your furniture and stuff, then we're gonna have the after. So what's your furniture yeah, looking like? Big, well, it's like a, a. It's not a large sectional, but it's like two piece sectional where it's like. Two piece, yeah. Yeah, like that, and it's corner like that. So uh-huh. I'm trying to figure out where do I want the TV if, when I get the TV. Yeah. So what'd you say? Yeah, I was thinking about that. It's when I have my sectional, just put it L corner like uh-huh. right here, so it's kind of like a little entryway. Yeah. In. Yeah. Otherwise, you got to put it on that wall. Yeah, and I got the TV there. TV on this wall? Because I also got a chair as well. Okay. So, the chair could go... Yeah, if I put the thing... TV on that wall, the chair could go over here, the L could go over there. All right, so y'all, where should he... Should he park his Chrysler 300 in the garage and move this somewhere and put it in the office? Or should he squeeze them both in here? He says they can't fit, but... I got, I got a question for you. I'll turn this light off. Yep. So how typically how much does it cost? You wanna finish it? I was thinking I got a crew. I'm thinking like a home project type. Oh, like if you did it yourself? Yeah, because I looked on mm. people. So how much it would cost as a home project to finish your own basement? Your materials will probably cost about not that much, probably. Well wood is more expensive now. That's so you got wood, of. drywall, and electric. You gotta be able to cut. Okay. Basement that size would probably be three thirty five hundred dollars in material, something like that. About thirty five hundred well, material. I, I was thinking, well, I, I don't know how you want it, but there, there's like a side where there's like. Let's the, go look at it. Let's look at this project. Inquiring. All right, let's see what kind of stuff we're gonna do down here. So when we get to the before and after, it's gonna be all jacked up. <laughs> so, just this little area, like all this right here, uh-huh. probably be like walled off with the door, so you go in and access it or whatever. Okay. And then this will be the. Oh, that's easy. That'd be cheaper than thirty five hundred. Yeah, I could get somebody over here. I could get somebody over here quick to just start banging that out. If you wanted to, I say get your upstairs done first, though. Nah, yeah, I gotta get somebody back. This little area, yeah, they, they can bang that out real quick, bro. We're talking about like little chips. Like even if you were to finish this out, these are still. I mean, you probably feel like calls yeah, that's here, what that's what you normally would do. But you know, then if someone's trying to. I don't know. Yeah, this if you want to have a little man cave down here, it'd be worth it. Add value to the crib and stuff. So we might do that on before and after too. So there it is, folks. That is uh. One of my real estate investments. Investment is doing well. I need to spruce, I need to spruce this up, but by Reggie staying there. Uh, Reggie's one of my employees or more like a business partner. Um, with him staying there, we can get this house in tip-top condition while he stays here. Then when he moves out, it's just going to have that much more value. Or he can stay here as long as he wants because he's my right-hand man. He's been working with me for... You guys seen it since 2005. And, um, you know, so my thing is, if you're ever going to take a loss in real estate, make it make it mean something. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I've had people stay in my properties before, um, and I don't charge them what I could charge because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm um, spreading the wealth, I guess you could say, or, like, you know, when I'm doing good and I want everybody else to, to, that's around me to do good as well. So... <clears throat> business has been doing awesome. Reg has been helping me out big time. So, Reg will pay about half price on this on this particular property, but uh he deserves it and he helps me so much with my main business like it's really for me it's not like I'm really taking a loss. It's really just him being my business partner and sharing in um you know what we built over the years. So, you know, I kind of got into real estate by myself. But I wouldn't have been able to get into the real estate without, um, 
my main business, you know what I'm saying? And, and he helped me with my main business. So that main business and this real estate company that I built is going to help him. That's, that's, that's how you do it. Or at least that's how I do it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're ever going to take an L, um, make sure you can afford to take an L and then uh, make sure it makes sense. You know, and for me, this, this just kind of makes sense. So we'll come check Reg out when he gets his, when he gets the house, uh, how he wants it. And we'll help, you know, make the house like new for him. And then it'll be fun to come back over here and check it out. So now a little bit about uh, investing in real estate. A lot of people kind of, you know, I normally do not take an L on anything. And with regard to real estate and the businesses that I do. Um, so for you guys tuning in for the first time to my channel, you're wondering like who I am, what I do with real estate investing. I'm a real estate investor, but I'm also an engineer, software engineer, business owner, entrepreneur. Uh, I, um, I bought and sold over 50, 60 properties over the years and, um, and built a real estate portfolio that currently is about 20 properties, uh, rental properties, but I'm, but I also do flips and, um, I like to share the knowledge and experience that I had to learn and teach myself that took years and years. I've, um, built an online course to help people that are serious about learning how to invest in real estate. I've uh, I've shared my experience in an online course. So um, if anybody's interested in that, definitely check it out. As a matter of fact, if you come from YouTube, you get a pretty significant discount on the course to make it affordable for everybody. There's a link in the description. Check out that link and um, let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, this is this is what I do, man. It's, uh, it's not only sort of a, a business, but it's also a passion, man, because when you start investing in real estate, you can actually help people out and so even exchange, a lot of people sometimes boggles my mind because I make good money with investing in real estate and people <laughs> almost like, uh, I don't know, like people, some people have a problem with landlords or something like that. And they think it's bad that you make money off of people, but you got to understand like people will rent your property. It's an even exchange. And a lot of times they feel like when they deal with me, they feel like they're getting a really good value or a really good product for what they pay for. You know what I'm saying? So like, for example, in my city, uh, a little apartment, um, in the same area, you might have to pay, uh, $1,200 minimum for a two bedroom apartment all the way up to $2,000 for like a three bedroom apartment. And I, and I'm giving people houses, uh, for less than $2,000 a month, not an apartment, but a house with a basement with garage and all that kind of stuff for less than $2,000 a month. And then some, some of my houses are actually less than a thousand, only a couple, but so, you know, so even exchange, man. So, so for those of you out there that have had your issues with landlords and that kind of stuff and gone through it, just try to be a landlord, you know what I'm saying? Try to own some property. And my advice for the day is, um, if you, if you rent a property, get to the place where you can own a property, because let's say you're renting for 10 years and your rent is, two thousand dollars a month over a 10 year period what is that uh twenty four thousand dollars a year times 10 is two hundred forty thousand dollars so for 10 years you could have two hundred forty thousand dollars towards a property which is an investment so that when you and after 10 years if you wanted to move you could get that two hundred forty thousand dollars back most likely as long as you invest in a decent neighborhood and decent house at the end of that 10 years you get that two hundred forty thousand dollars back to put towards your next house or whatever and probably uh, more, you know, if the value of the house went up and that kind of thing, you might get more than two hundred forty thousand back. But if you've been renting that whole time and it come ten years, uh, and you're ready to move, you get nothing. You get nothing from renting. So for all of these gurus and people out there and investors and entrepreneurs that say don't buy at home, I vehemently disagree with that. Um, now there could be some cases where it might not make sense, like if you're super short term or where you're going to stay. But if you're going to be somewhere for ten years in a city or something like that then um, it makes sense to own, man. That's why everybody's scrambling to buy houses right now. Interest rates are low. So consider investing in real estate. All right, so y'all check out my course if you're interested in that. And uh, next video will be back to some car content. Just got back home. And I'm not gonna lie, man. <laughs> when I open up the garage, get ready to go in the house. And I see this SV. I do feel proud, man, of the accomplishment. And what this represents for me, which for me, this represents the culmination of a lot of hard work over the years, 
a lot of smart investing, a lot of good relationships with people and clients and even friends and family. And um, using those good relationships, using those, um, you know, that motivation I get from other people and uh, being able to accomplish something that when you look at it, you say one or two things happen. Either somebody gave him that or he worked hard for it. (laughs) And in my case, it's real easy. I worked hard for it. So I do feel proud when I see this thing in the garage. But believe me, this is not everything. There's much more important things in life, like friends and family. But <clears throat> in life, you got to have fun, too. It's all about balance. So that is something <laughs> about fun. <laughs>